Now that Muddy Mass couldn't stop Diplo from making it to his next concert. The DJ posted to his Instagram saying that he walked six miles through the mud out of the desert before hitchhiking his way out of the festival to make sure to make sure that he made it to Washington, D.C. on time. <laughs> and he was joined by Chris Rock in the back of a truck with a group of fans. Naturally. Diplo made it to the airport, walking barefoot on the tarmac, and posted to his Instagram quote, "No one believed we would get to the DC would get to DC for the show tonight, but God did." So joining us now is three-time Grammy Award winner Diplo. Welcome to the program. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. So were you uh, barefoot and walking, duct tape and bags walking? What were we dealing with here in terms of a plan I, to get I, out? I tried the duct tape and walking, but I had some pretty good uh, boots that had zippers instead of ties, and uh, they worked pretty well. They, they were caked with mud, so they got pretty heavy. They were like three pounds each at one point, so I have some pretty strong leg muscles after that walk. But... Um, when you started to walk in the mud, you kind of realize you have to stay low to the ground and it's very slippery. And if you don't walk on where it was chewed up from tire marks, it's pretty easy to move out of there. Um, what was it like watching? It. What was it like watching other people? I mean, was there a lot of dialogue in between tents? Were people actually debating, should we leave, should yeah. we stay? Uh, it was around Friday, I think 11 p.m. I was having dinner um, in our camp and our camp next door was Chris Rock was there. Uh, Sidney Crawford, Kai Gerber, Austin Butler, Michael Kivas, a bunch of people were there that were, um, you know, living in that camp. And they had the news that there's no chance of leaving tonight because there's going to be even more rain forecast. And uh, the main issue is getting a car out of there is really impossible when it's muddy because you're going to get stuck. And if they have a lot of cars stuck on, on the on the on the playa, it's going to create huge traffic jams for for the eventual exodus of people. So there was no information. We had to we checked the Burning Man Twitter, and I think at 10 a.m. we said, "Let's regroup and see if we can walk out of here." And um, I was, I said, "That's the only way we can do it is we, we can walk out." And uh, we planned a, an excursion that next morning, and I think we headed out, me and about 20 other people, and we just we just walked, and we didn't see many people on the road, and we just we kept walking. They said the gate was closed. It's it's a general term for the gate. The gate wasn't allowing cars in because people come to Burning Man the last day for the burn. They love the Sunday and the Saturday, but there's no actual gate to, to, to open or close. It's just the matter of the, the, the mud ends and a, and a paved road begins. And that paved road goes to Gerlach, Nevada. And we had to walk to that, to that, to that paved road. Are you still in contact with people there? Uh, most of my friends did get out. I mean, a lot of the, the DJ friends that I had were all asking me how I do it, and I gave them all advice. And I think like ten of my friends that were had, that had worked this weekend because it's Labor Day weekend. Of course, we have to work. Um, we all made it out. A lot of my friends made it out. Some of them are still there in the camp. They're having a good time. They're waiting it out. Um, you know, this this the mud always dries up there. It's the middle of the desert. You don't expect rain, but if you have sunshine, it can dry up in four or five hours with with direct sun. It just has been o overcast the whole time, so it's been really hard to to dry out. Uh, the moment between deciding you were going to actually launch the excursion and the video that I think everybody in the country has seen up to this point, including the, the what seemingly random appearance of Chris Rock as you scrolled around uh, the camera, which wasn't so random since he was in camp next door. What what was that like, those hours? What were you talking? What were you guys doing as you were kind of making this trek towards uh, finally getting picked up? I mean... For sure, Chris is going to have a huge bit in his next special about Burning Man because he was really uh, bizarrely scared of what was going to happen. He thought there was going to be cannibalism and a day later and, you know, didn't know people were going to run on our camp and steal our stuff. But I said, look, man, this is a great. People know what they're doing here. Everybody here is camping. They all have self-reliance. Um, and we just said, I, I was surprised. He had his New York Knicks jacket on and we just, he just got up with us and started walking. And we walked about three hours in the mud, and um, he was happy. It was me. I think Cindy Crawford walked with us, Kaya Gerber, Austin Butler, um, Randy Gerber, um, a writer, a couple uh, producers from TV, a couple people that just wanted to get home to their children, and they didn't take no for an answer. We were just like, look, we can make it out. There's no one stopping us from walking, and, you know, it was a challenge, but it, it was honestly one of the highlights of the whole trip was just getting out there and enjoying the time out there and, you know, seeing the desert and, walking through the mud and meeting fans and some kid recognized me on the road and said, Hey, I'll give you a ride for the next two miles. And we gladly took it. And, um, we had a good time in the back of the truck. We rode for about four miles into the city and we sat at a bar for a while and hung out with people and found a, found a ride to Reno. 
And it was like uh, the old times, you know, just 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 caravanning across the, the country. Anything for that kid? Free tickets or uh, a sign, Diplo merch? I some, yeah, I got I got his number. He's, he lives in he lives in Nevada, so he's gonna come to some shows. His name was Tony. He was awesome, really good guy. And then we found some hippies in the street that had a, a spinner van, and we, we said, "Hey, we'll give you a a thousand dollars, and we'll Venmo you if you take us to the airport." And he had some beers, and we just got in the back of the car, and we just drove for three hours and listened to some like Neil Young and just drank some beers and. Uh, I made my somehow I made the, the the flight and I made the show. I have no idea how it happened, but then went to my show in DC and had a great time. And now I'm back back in Nevada now, uh, here in Las Vegas for a party. And um, yeah, I'm glad I made it out. But I think I think it's people that Bernie Man, the organizers are very prepared. It doesn't rain often. It's the first time I think in history it rained during the festival, but it rains sometimes, and they're prepared for this kind of a situation. Um, I just think a lot of people that aren't navigating and camping and like able to to handle themselves might have been scared wow. but it's it's wasn't that bad there wasn't any ebola breakout like like i saw the memes there wasn't any cannibalism um everybody was having a good time people were making mud sculptures huge sculptures out of mud and just kind of continuing with their art and had it you know they might be out there for two extra days but they had a great time uh, honestly between a multi-hour walk with chris rock and then that car ride you described um it sounds yeah. potentially better than what, what a normal Burning Man would have been. Yeah. Uh, Diplo, we really appreciate the time. Glad you got out. Awesome you got to D.C. and then, I guess, back. Shout uh, out again. to Tony. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> yeah. it, man. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks. This is what people have been trudging through. For days now, festival goers have been hunkering down and told to conserve their food, water, and fuel. Camilla Bernal is live near the festival. And Camilla, let's just start with the latest on the situation. Hey, audience, Phil. Well, look, it's still muddy, it's still messy, and it's still pretty wet from what we can see in some areas. We're exactly at the main exit and entrance to the playa. This is what they call the eight-mile access to the playa, right? And so it's where the playa turns into the road. We've seen a couple of cars today trying to get out of here, even in the middle of the night. And it's going to be difficult today. The shelter in place is still on. The thing is that if you're trying to get out they will let you but you are going to have a very difficult time i want to show you what the vehicles of the bureau of land and management look like they've been in that mud and it they are completely uh, covered in mud the operation here is just getting started because they're waiting for thousands and thousands to try to get out but the people that get out their cars look like this and the people that are trying to walk out have told me look it's taken me three hours what they end up doing is that they get these plastic bags and wrap their shoes uh, with duct tape and they've told me that really is the only way that you can walk for miles and miles as you try to get out to make it to this road to the main exit um, again it's just difficult people were not expecting so much rain so much mud but a lot of people that I've talked to have remained extremely positive look they say they've had a great time at the festival they say that they've enjoyed their time here and they're trying to make the best out of a very difficult situation but officials are telling them conserve food conserve water fuel because if they do have to stay here for extra days a lot of them do not have enough food or water uh, for just a number of days they had not planned for. That's really the concern for a lot of people. They have been sharing. This is an event where people uh, essentially feel free to self-express, to create art, to come together. So you're seeing those vibes. You're seeing uh, that positivity. But officials here are saying just be careful because you still may not be able to get out today. They're saying they're going to look again when the sun comes out, decide after uh, they look at the mud and the conditions and how things improve or not. Um, so so in the meantime, we're just waiting for the sun to come up to see how things are going to end up going for today. But so far, it's still looking muddy and it's still looking messy. So we do expect to see people coming out. The question is whether officials will give them that green light and make it official. Guys. Yeah. Wait and see. Hopeful vibes. Camila, great reporting. Thanks so much.